What's up guys, uh, my name is Josh and today I'm going to try and break down in basics the difference between standard dynamic drivers, AR magnetic drivers, and electrostatic drivers. So a standard dynamic driver is going to look a little bit like this. Okay, so basically the way this works is that there's, there's a, a plastic piece over the top of this that's just kind of holding the entire structure together, but underneath there, there's kind of this clear plastic membrane. Now underneath that, there's a magnet that has a coil wrapped around it. Now when that coil receives a signal, it basically goes around the coil and uh, the way that electromagnets work is that when the signal travels through the coil very quickly, it creates a pull on the magnet that's stronger than normal, which moves the membrane and then it does that many, many times per second and that creates the sound. Now a lot of people think that creating a standard dynamic driver is actually simple because you just need to put a signal through a magnet and that'll move the dynamic driver. So why do they sound different? It, it comes down to how well produced the electronics are because the driver itself, let's say it needs to move in a, a an area from here to here and it needs to create a low note and a high note simultaneously so a lot of people think that the driver will go low note and then high note and it'll just switch between the two it doesn't do that what it does is it goes high note high note high note while it's doing the low notes so it's moving many times within a single movement itself and it does that many 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 times per second so that driver needs to be built out of a very very industrious and sustainable and very lightweight material. Now that's kind of the difficult part and that's where different drivers sound different, especially with dynamic drivers, not only that, but the actual acoustical properties of the headphone design itself. So in principle, dynamic drivers, very, very simple. In practice, not so much. Now it gets even more complicated when we hop over to planar magnetics. Now planar magnetics are gonna look a little bit different. It's actually, it's actually a rectangle that looks a little bit like that. Now you can see within that rectangle that there are little lines going vertically and then there are these bars of metal that are going horizontally. That silver is what you want to be paying attention to. Those horizontal black metal bars are called the diffuser and those vertical little lines are basically, they take a sheet membrane and they put electrically conductive wire that goes up and down and that's what that vertical line is. That is in between two different magnets and depending on the, the signal, it's gonna move that entire piece. Think about a sheet of paper in between two subwoofers and depending on the, the amount of pressure coming out of the subwoofer, the, the sheet of paper will move, right? This is kind of the same theory except completely different, but that gives you a good analogy and good explanation of how exactly it moves. Now it sends a current through there in a positive and negative current, which if you see on the back, you have this red wire and this white wire on the opposite side. Now those do different things. That, they both push and pull and that creates a dynamic sound. So this driver will actually sound exactly the same on the inside as well as on the outside. So then you get into different sounding driver types within the planar magnetic spectrum and others like Audis have waveguides that actually are kind of like a little triangle on one of those those horizontal black bars that directs the sound. It kind of think of it as like a waveguide on a speaker. And you have a, in that waveguide provides a way of directing the orientation of that. All right, and then you have the most expensive and most complicated type of driver, the electrostatic driver. Now this does kind of what the name implies. It electrically conducts a static charge to two different plates on either side of a membrane. Now, unlike the planar magnetic drivers, that membrane itself has no electrically conductive wires running through it. It's just the membrane. Now the membrane reacts to static electricity and they put a positive charge and a negative charge on either one of those plates. And those plates go on, off, on, off, on, off, and only the very, very thin membrane moves. And a lot of the conductive plates have holes through them. And I'll pop up a picture right here because I unfortunately don't have a pair. So now that we have kind of a basic understanding of how they operate, what are the differences in sound and what can you expect? Well, a standard dynamic driver um, everything from a, a silk dome tweeter to a mid-range driver to a subwoofer is going to have the same general principle under how it works. And because of the actual properties of the physical mechanics of it, the dynamic driver would be able to get to a lower bass note than any of the other drivers. And those low notes usually come in the form of a subwoofer. And with very, very large, very, very deep subwoofers, you can be talking about a movement range of like five or six inches. Now with both planar magnetic and electrostatic drivers, unfortunately you are never probably going to get the that low of a note. 
Um, and the reason why is because of the physical limitations of the driver itself. See on both, that membrane that moves is only able to move so far. And unlike a dynamic driver, which has this kind of suspension system that allows the actual cone to maintain shape but move within a given range, and I'll show you that here. Okay, slight disclaimer. I absolutely do not recommend that you ever touch your driver, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna show you what this does. So this carbon fiber membrane here, the carbon fiber cone itself shouldn't really flex all that much. But there's a rubber surrounding here that allows the driver to move while maintaining shape while only activating the rubber. The planar magnetic and the electrostatic drivers, if you imagine the membrane itself as a piece of paper, the reason why it can't move is because a normal dynamic driver will have a membrane around here, around the edge, that is kind of a springy or rubbery type material that allows this to hold shape, but the spring to actually actuate the movement, and so there's not as much stress on the driver itself. Planar magnetic and electrostatic drivers are a little bit different. They're held down tight on all four of the edges, and because of that, they can only move the inside of the membrane. Now the entire membrane itself doesn't move anymore. Now what this allows is a lot more accurate sound signature, especially when you get up into the really, really high end things like the Sennheiser HE1, which is a $50,000 pair of headphones, or even Stax, which will run you anywhere between a thousand bucks to 5,000 bucks. So because of the physical limitations and the stress that that's gonna put on that sheet of paper, you're gonna have different results in sound. So for absolute low notes, you wanna go dynamic driver. For a mid range, you wanna go a planar magnetic. And for a, the very upper end, you could go electrostatic. And it's just because the electrostatic technology works a little bit quicker and it's able to produce higher frequencies than the planar magnetic driver. Now, to be honest, within the range of human hearing and what we are actually physically capable of hearing, there are drivers of all three types that exceed the range on both ends, both in low notes and in high notes, which means that they are actually physically beyond human comprehension for what we can hear. Now, beyond that, back to the physical structure of the headphones themselves, planar magnetic and electrostatic allow for a much more open sound. And the reason for that is because on a dynamic driver, if you look at the driver, there's an entire structure right outside of your ear, which means that any sound that's bouncing not only off your ear, but coming from the outside world, is gonna hit that driver and obstruct that sound signature. Whereas with planar magnetic, all the electronics and the structures are on the outside, so everything can actually pass through here. If I shine a light through here, you can actually see through it. So as well as light passes through that, so does sound. And this allows for a couple of things. This allows for sound to not only come from the outside world in a little bit better, but it also allows for sound not to bounce around in that little chamber between the driver and your ear as much. And what that means is, for example, we've all heard very boomy bass, just really, really echoey, not so great, just thick, kind of untextured bass. Now, does that sound as good as deep textured bass? No, it doesn't because, because the boomy bass is basically working within a chamber that has the same frequency hitting your ear multiple times and that makes everything muddy or kind of, and sound kind of slurred together in a way. So what an open back design, especially like a planar magnetic or an electrostatic allows for is the sound to bounce into your ear and then when it hits around your ear and the areas within the headphone, it's not gonna bounce back and then hit your ear again, it's gonna bounce back and out. So it's not gonna be all of it, but a lot more of that acoustical resonance is gonna be able to leave the headphone rather than bouncing back, which is gonna give you a much cleaner sound signature. Not necessarily brighter, just cleaner. All right, so that's gonna about wrap it up. This video is getting pretty long. Uh, if you like the video, definitely leave a like. If you dislike it, you know what to do already. Um, my name is Josh. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.